Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to another episode of Andy Talks Navy. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a reaction video to Making a Sailor Episode 5. Um, we're almost done with this series. We only got one more episode left to go. Uh, things are looking pretty good right now. Um, this is where all the fun stuff starts to happen, so I'm really expecting uh, some good things from this episode. And also, if you've been following this little mini reaction series, I finally changed my shirt. Only took me five episodes to do it, right? But uh, anyway, guys, let's get on with it. All right, guys, we're on episode five of Making a Sailor, so let's begin. One, three, four, one, two. We're marching. Three, four, <laughs> one, two, oh, three, man. four. Oh. Scoot to the right, PFC! Get him. So now that we're going into week four with Division 2 to 9, and the division as a whole is starting to Doing work this in together the rain? a lot Damn. better. Division 2 to... Uh, I don't think I'll ever get used to these, uh, these type threes, man. I just... I miss the blueberries, man. Hashtag bring back blueberries. Do not all present or accounted for, sir! Very well. Very well. <laughs> The standard is set, and they have to do what they can do to reach the standard, and that's helping bring them together as a team. Oh yeah. They say that um, basic training doesn't get better; you get better. And that's some real ass knowledge right there, man. Like the first, and this is something you'll probably see in this episode, maybe leading up to the last episode, is that you know the first four weeks are basically just to break you down, and then the last four are to build you back up again. And you really start to see that turning point around uh, week three, week four-ish, when you start to do all the cool stuff, which is, I think, what we're getting into in this video. But just remember, um, you know, boot camp doesn't really get better. You get better. So I think that's definitely true. Oh, yeah. When we first picked the division up, we can barely get them to stand still and just left or right face. But now coming to week four training, yeah, they've been absolutely. marching everywhere. Like, even even my uncoordinated day, ass could, could do it. So. Now you guys can do it, too. Every day. Now I'm marching every day. Hey. Yeah, our, our progression, it's been Raincoats really cool seeing it and just looking back on our PDA days. And the first day that we tried to start marching and how horrible it looked. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of like the progression just happened um, right before our eyes. The yeah. transition is night and day. Oh, abs absolutely. Like, it's just one of those things where you keep doing it, you get into the rhythm of it and get into the motion of things. And, you know, you're going to be doing it a lot. You know, the whole now we're marching every day isn't just a, a fun little thing. You know, it's just something you do. So... Eventually, just start to get good at it. Every time Cadences come on, I'm always in the back screaming. You, know, you can hear my voice all yeah. the way in the front. I was in the middle because I was, you know, average height. The, the division has come a long way physically, but they still have a long way to go. Here at Recruit Training Command, we have physical fitness training six days a week. So about three days a week we do some in-house physical fitness oh, What are those push-ups, dude? Like, I, I know my push-ups suck, but man. Different okay, exercises that we can do right here in a small but space to get the recruits in better shape. Pants. And then uh, four days a week we go over to Freedom Hall. Freedom Hall, baby! Where they oh, get to run. This, uh, all right. Some members of Division 229 struggle to meet Navy's physical standards. So they got to be on their uh, their second uh, PFA test because, uh, just a little recap, guys, um, you take three uh, PFAs while in boot camp. The first one is just kind of an initial assessment, just to kind of see where people are. Um, you know, Then by the second one, you should kind of have a, a better gauge of, of where you're at. And then obviously the, the third one's the for realsy one. So if you uh, if you didn't do so good on the second one, be a lot of work put into you for the uh, the last one. But just remember, you know, keep running, keep uh, keep doing the PT, and uh, you'll get there. Half the division. God damn, that's rough, dude. Oof, oof, that's rough. So, um, yeah, 
<laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Almost half of the division. Fuck sakes. Oof. So it's all a building block to get him up to the standard that the Navy wants him to be at prior to leaving yeah. through training command. Yeah, I've seen my waistline go down, which is awesome. Fitness is, is going well, you know. It, it also helps that we've been put on our faces every day. Yeah, that's true, man. Like, uh, you know, the beatings do, in a way, help you get ready for that. And uh, also, like, for me, because I was overweight when I came into uh, boot camp, I was just two pounds overweight, so not that much, but still enough to be classified as overweight, so... Uh, for my height, I had to be 191 or below, and I was 193 when I got into boot camp. And then for my last PFA, I was 195. And my whole goal throughout boot camp was to not get taped for the final PFA. So I was just like, just, you know, drink nothing but water. Didn't have any pop or any of that other stuff, you know, for drinks. Didn't have any desserts except for uh, one thing on Sunday. I would have one dessert on Sunday, and that's it. You know, um, and then obviously with the beatings and the PFA and all this kind of stuff um, really helped get me there. But I was still kind of mad because I didn't want to get taped for that final PFA and I ended up gaining two pounds. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? But they eventually taped me up and stuff. And they real, you know, they told me, you know, you lost like 8% body fat from when you first came into boot camp. So it was all muscle, I guess. So that's that's good. But still, I was. Kind of upset that I had to get rope and choked, but it is what it is. Anyway, we move on. So I try to think about that when we have to do our little flow kicks and yeah. ten count cord builders. Yeah. So it it has certainly improved PZ for sure. Oh, come on. From my perspective, Ooh. I do think we are good friends. IT. Too. In a professional standpoint, yes, Chief. Wait, professional. what? Explain to me what professionalism is when you're going out of your way to talk to each other. You're talking to each other in an inappropriate places. Ooh. You're talking to each other Ooh. when you should not be. So you. T oh, man. Ooh, this is going to be a rough day for these guys. So um, I guess from my understanding, these uh, two male-female recruits were talking with each other. Uh <laughs> They were talking about the uh, the general orders. I take it. Um, yeah, this is a pretty delicate situation. But for me, I was I was part of an all male division, two eight three, <laughs> and uh, we didn't have to deal with stuff like this. But uh, I think integrated divisions are becoming obviously a lot more commonplace as more females are entering the service. Um, I don't even know if they do all male divisions anymore. You know, just a little little question of the day here, guys. A little question of the day. Um, if you've been through boot camp recently, do they still have all male divisions? I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below. So. Tell me about professionalism. You better fix your military just, bearing right now. I'm sorry, Chief. Chief. Shut up! I oh, she said, I'm sorry, Chief. Mistake number one. You've been in boot camp long enough to not say, I'm sorry, Chief. Ooh. Ooh. Watch him get smoked. Hey, Chief. Here's the point. Conversations. Shouldn't be had. Good friends. Not in my boot camp. That's right. Everything that you guys are doing is against good order and discipline. I'm going to ensure that whatever relationship you're trying to have here in boot camp, whether it's just good friends, social buddies, or whatever you word it, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't happen here. Yeah. Do the workout correctly. Yeah, it's not, it sounds a little strict, you know, but... You know, I've I've heard a lot of stories of uh, recruits shacking up and stuff, and uh, you know, after a while, it does tend to break down the the order of things. So, and in, in any event, guys, at the end of the day, you know, it's just eight weeks, two months, out of your whole military career. You know, that's you know, it's basically like just 
being underway if you're out in Seventh Fleet anyway. Um, <laughs> save it for later, man. Save it for later. Now is not the time to be uh, getting social with people. You can do that once you're all graduated and you know you're in A school or whatever. So. <gasps> He's on the deck. One, two, three. One, two, three. One more thing. Sorry, I, I keep interrupting you guys, but one more thing I, I just remembered. Um, if you're, you're uh, getting IT'd, uh, or basically just being singled out for a beating, um, you know, do the best you can with uh, the, with the form and everything. Don't don't like quit and be like, oh, I can't breathe. Oh my god, these push ups are so hard. Oh my god, I can't do this. Cause like they have absolutely no sympathy for you. If you if you're able to complain, you're able to breathe. And that's exactly what they're gonna say. So just get through it. You know, just realize it'll eventually end and just get through it and uh carry on smartly. So anyway. We get on to Marlin Spike, which is uh, one of the first fun evolutions that you guys go through. Um, when my division went through, uh, we had a lot of uh, little failures here and there. A lot of knees on the deck. That was a big failure. Don't ever put your knees on the deck. One thing I've learned from Marlin Spike, don't ever do that. And it's basically a line handling exercise. Now, I was a sonar tech, so... We did a lot of line handling in the fleet, so... Are you ready? Always ready. And three, up to the ships. One, two, three. Anyway, we were always out in the Fantel uh, for Sea and Anchor, so yeah, I, I got used to line handling pretty quickly. But you just get a little Martin crash Spike course here. Huge team evolution. Uh, from what I've heard, they actually do put so more time and effort in teaching you how to do these they, things now. Operate as a team. But back when I went in, they get the Marlin Spike and they find out exactly. It was just a couple days. What real team work? So, yeah. All right, now you're gonna put four figure eight. Learning how to tie a knot and cast off the line and actually yeah. tie down the ship, I felt like was a lot more practical. Oh yeah. Everybody has to be able to get the ship underway. Yeah. So. When it comes down to line handling, when it comes down to that Marlin Spike evolution, they got to work together. Absolutely. Life before Marlin Spike and life after Marlin Spike was night and day. Let's go, we got this, let's go! Yeah, and I think what Chief said is definitely true. I think, you know, come to think of it, Marlin Spike is kind of the turning point for where your division starts to kind of come together. You know, that's actually hits at the halfway point anyway, so that's what I was saying earlier anyway. So that was really hard, but I felt like it made us, it forced us to work together. Booyah! Booyah! strong with this division. Oh, firefighting. Getting Every hot single in the hot box. Is a firefighter. Yeah, yep. Damage control training is uh, extremely important. Oh, yeah. Everybody has to know it. Oh, yeah. If Relieve they don't have the, the proper man training, eye. then you lose the ship. And that's one of the damage control team commanders. You do not yeah. get the ship. You, you don't I really think about all I, I the things that can happen while you're guys. in the middle of the ocean. I want the best. You know, your ship going down or being uh, attacked, and then really all you have is each other and the skills that you learn. Yeah. Yes, but in a real situation, am, uh, the DC men something was wrong, will know, take over and uh, kind of guide you from there. there. This will but, uh, be the best. You definitely got to know what you got to do. Camp, Booyah! Booyah! Oh, the gas chamber. After me. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oof. Yeah, lighten it up, man. I remember uh, my position in the gas chamber was, uh, I wasn't right in front of it, but I was behind the guy that was right in front of it. And uh, I was really nervous about it, as everyone was, of course. And when, as soon as they lit it up with the pellet, I could, I could feel the, uh, the gas. This is before I even removed my mask. I was thinking, I, I started panicking because I thought, oh, shit, I didn't have a good seal. I thought I had a good seal, but I don't have a good seal. And I, I started, like, just panicking, like, shit. 
I'm going to be dead before I even remove this mask. It's just like, oh my God. But uh, once it got to my turn, I removed the mask. Uh, the, the feeling is really weird. It reminded me, well, it didn't remind me of anything. It was just like the best way I can equate it would be if they removed all the air out of the room, which I guess is technically what it does. But uh, if they removed all the air out of the room and it just got really, really hot. So that's basically the vibe I, I was uh, I was dealing with. But uh, when I got out of the chamber, I thought I did terrible. I thought I was just looking really bad. And then I saw other people come out, and I was just like, holy shit. Like, they did way worse than I did. <laughs> they had freaking snot coming down. Their eyes were all bloodshot. And I was just like, I don't feel so bad about uh, my going in. But anyway, let's see how these guys do. Light it up, baby. You would think, okay, so is this mask Masked really going to cover up? me and keep me alive? <laughs> <laughs> it's called confidence. Shame for a reason. It gives you the confidence on the equipment of the Navy. Yeah. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I yeah. think on a scale of 1 to 10, I would have gave it like a 5. It burns. Yeah, that's, that's oh, burns. Like right under my nose, yeah. it burns. But... <laughs> I think we sliced it a little bit more than. Oh yeah, like after just a couple just minutes, I was fine. My eyes were watering, but still watering. Once I got in the fresh air, a minute or two. I really two, didn't call for it. Like, it wasn't that bad as I said it was. But it varies you between people. So. Y'all got confidence in that gear? Yes, That's what I'm talking about. Y'all see this? Yes, that means it's a good day. It's a good day. Good day to be in the Navy. Who are you, Navy? I do believe that they're doing a lot better job. Getting these recruits yeah. a basic knowledge of what they're going to be expected to do once yeah, they like get out. Like I said, Marlon Spike's their big turning point. So uh, that's when you start to see the uh, the RDCs kind of loosen up a little bit. You know, it's less about beating your face in and more about being motivated. And this is where all the fun stuff starts to happen. So if you can embrace the, the first three to four weeks of suck, then you get to some of the fun stuff. But, uh, you know, move on. This is cool. So I know when I came to boot camp nine years ago, we had oh, a damn. three or four day course on firefighting and then in two days on the one came handling. in around the same and time. And now I the did. are getting it. That's crazy. Every single week once they hit week four until we'll the, see nine, the week they that graduate. Been, uh, and I think that will help prepare sailors for the fleet a lot better. And one of the primary things that we yeah, all do as instructors is we give these recruits uh, the experience, the, the yeah. real life experience. Of yeah, uh, this is uh, this is some pretty intense shit, man. Like uh, I remember when I was uh, going through the uh, the briefing for the M9, the whole big thing was you have to like keep your eyes completely awake. You couldn't like nod off or kind of like you know do the do one of these little numbers like uh <laughs> you had to be like awake the whole time and this one this one gm like singled me out and i thought for sure because the whole big thing was uh if you fall asleep during the briefing then you would just automatically fail it and my eyes were just kind of kind of like that they weren't like, that's just how my eyes normally are. It's not like I was like, oh, man, it's so boring. Like, I was awake. I was just kind of like this, you know, because after a while, you know, you kind of start to relax a little bit, and, you know. But this one GM singled me out um, for it, and I thought for sure I would fucking failed the course before I even started, and I was just like, oh, fuck, man. But then I eventually just got back in with everybody, and it was just like, oh, okay. I guess he was just giving me a really stern warning. Whatever. <laughs> Miscommunication. But anyway, point being, stay awake during the briefing and all this, because this is some, like, important shit, obviously. Uh, but it is pretty cool to do. Um, I don't think I ever fired a... had a firearm before this, actually. <laughs> so this was uh, pretty interesting for me. And uh, if you guys are wondering, no, I did not get much better. <laughs> um... Obviously did good enough to pass, but uh, that was about it. So, yeah. If you guys are wondering if I still keep up with uh, shooting guns and stuff like that, not really. 
I don't think I've shot since uh, since my last weapons qual. And that was back in 2015, I guess. You know, I don't really have any interest in doing it. I only really did it for the qual because part of weapons department and stay and watch. So kind of had to. <laughs> had to get M9 qualed. So anyway, let's move on. First of all, handling this weapon in an environment that's close to reality. It's not quiet, it's not passive. Uh, it, it's going to take enthusiasm to survive in an environment like this. So that's pretty much what we do. Ooh, man. Oof. Oh, man. But not going to lie, that's about what mine <laughs> looks like. A good aggressive stand. This dude looking like Wesley Snipes from Blade, man. I didn't miss my I'm target, scared. which was great, so I think I did all right. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed shooting, new, uh, shooting weapons. Yeah. It's kind of a good, it's part of the cool things, man. It's part of the cool things to start to do, you know? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the Navy's done to me? What the Navy's done to me? Since uh, the P days to now, they're, they're the completely different yeah. recruits. Every time we walk past um, Pearl Harbor, which is where P days was, yep. we kind of see through the window the people in their PT and their sweatsuits, and we're like, man, that was us only a few weeks ago. Yeah, totally. And that was us looking out the window at some of our senior divs. Yeah. And, we're like, and that's something else. I know I, I keep pausing for this one but there's again there's a lot of talking points and i don't want to like talk over them that's something i learned from the previous reactions didn't really sound that good so i'm just going to pause when i have a good talking point but in any event that's something else you guys are going to realize too is that uh once you get to a certain point in boot camp you're going to start seeing those changes and you know, you, you get to see the uh, the new recruits in P-Days, you know, just getting the friggin' Smurfs on and, you know, being very unsteady and uncoordinated. And it's just like, Jesus, that was us? Damn. But, you know, look at you now. You got the uniform on, you're marching with pride, you know, getting shit done, man. Boot camp's almost over at this point. So uh, I think that last episode is going to be... Uh, Gonna be the coup de gras. So anyway, let's continue. They're like, man, I wish I was there. And they're marching, and they have on their uniforms yeah. and their flags, and that's so cool. And we just got here three days ago. They yeah, understand there, that they have to work together as a team. They understand that no one can make it through boot camp completely by themselves. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, and the thing that makes you the most proud as an RDC is when you see them work together as a team, understand each other's weaknesses, and really really just come together. Absolutely. So yeah, that was episode five of uh, Making a Sailor. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I did. There was a lot of talking points with this one. That's why I paused a lot, because I noticed with the previous reaction videos, um, I ended up talking over what was going on in the video, so I decided to uh, just pause when I had a good talking point, so that way you guys could hear me. Uh, but in any event, guys, um, that's going to do it for this reaction video. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, in the boobity boops if you guys enjoy these types of reaction videos, because I, I see there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of reactionable material out there as it involves the, uh, the Navy, the military, Stuff like that. And uh, I think it's kind of a fun way for me to get back into these these Andy Talks Navy episodes, you know, because sometimes I got to, like, you know, sit down and do a whole thing, you know, when it comes to figuring out what I want to say. But uh, I like these reaction videos. They're kind of nice. You can uh, get some insight as to, um, you know, what the real Navy's like and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, guys... I'm going to uh, sign off for now. So with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign off for now, like I said, here, here at Andy Talks Navy HQ. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.